Ah, oh, right, I couldn't fix this image before we started. Hello all, and welcome to, I forgot to check the day, 293 of our 365 day streaming challenge. We are back at the Ladies of Lore. I am Steven. I'm Haley. Miriam. It's a... <laughs> so who remembers what Crushed happened it. last time? Um, we did a little bit of exploring. So basically, we're still on the tree frog planet. Uh, yep. Underground, found, and got access to their gondola system, which is you can teleport basically, right? That was the. No, idea. they appeared. They sort of teleported. It was kind of a press the button and hopefully it doesn't kill us. And hey, wait. Pretty much. Yeah, so Crash. we went to, there were basically a panel of buttons, we picked a button, we went there. Um, it was pretty deserted except for these creatures in cages, 99% um, of whom didn't talk to us. And then we got to one that talked to us, um, and I can't remember what they're called. Nothics. Nothic. With a K? Or just an O T H. N O T H I C. Thank you. So we let one of the Nothics out, and he's coming with us to help us overthrow and cause destruction and blah, blah, blah. And the Nothics just eat knowledge. That's kind of their, their shtick. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, that's about it. That's most of it. There, yeah. There's some missing details, but I'm not going to remind you. <laughs> Great. Um, <clears throat> but yes, you all were trying to decide which one of the magical gondola buttons you were going to go to next. Right. Called the gondola back. Didn't yeah, we you, press one already? No, you had called the gondola back and you were discussing where you thought you should go. Did we ask the Nothic? You did. He didn't know, did he? Um, he was confused because your questions didn't seem to make a heck of a lot of sense to him. Okay. Because mm. yeah. my vague memories that I'm willing to remind you of is that you asked him something about saving your people oh, specifically. Oh, why we had to go... Uh, and he oh, was confused the because areas. they would be kept with all of the slaves. Yeah, Haley is very quiet because she's talking very, very quietly. Sorry. I can turn up our mic, but then no, I might blow no. up the levels. It's it's fine. I will just do my best to talk louder because sometimes in my brain I don't talk loud. I can hear me, and that's all that matters. Not everybody else can hear. But anyway, yeah, I, now I remember this is we wanted to go get the crew and that involved, excuse me, that involved going to where the slaves are and doing something with the slaves. It was more of a logistical issue. Yeah. That there are hundreds of thousands of slaves and you somehow wanted to sort through all of them and just find yours. Uh, that would be this a problem, like, wouldn't this it? This is all like new information to you, Miriam. Yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's not. You were there for it. She just because you don't remember. A was I? You were. Keyboard. You were physically here for it. <laughs> physically here for it. Yes. You were on screen. Oh, no. Does that mean your brain was accepting and processing information? Absolutely <laughs> not. Not at all. <laughs> so. Oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, because we need a damn crew, because otherwise the ship's not going to run well, or really at all. I yeah. mean, we can always take prisoners for fuel, too. Yeah, but running the ship... But we kind of need... Yeah, yeah we do. Hands on duck. back. Okay, um, so let me... I'm going to go back to see what we have about the buttons, because we wrote down... 
I wrote nothing about the buttons. <laughs> I just wrote lots of buttons, orange, red, blue, gold, green, and purple. Yeah, that I is... thought we kind of tried, like, tying the buttons into the, class. the colors of a... Yeah. That's, but that's you've only right. seen three colors. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we, we judged also on buttons wear and tear and lack thereof, and that's kind of how we picked our first option. If I recall correctly, you went to a red one that looked like it had probably never been pressed or hadn't been pressed since the last time it got repainted. Yeah. Because we were right. trying to sneak. We were trying to right. be sneaky. Yes. Sneaky okay. slash not attract attention. <laughs> the above. Funny. I guess attract less attention than normal? Yeah. So. I mean, we're not like three foot tall tree frogs, so I don't know how great our lack of attracting attention is going to work. Yeah. Um, well, let's, let's pick another button. Let's, let's play button roulette and see which one it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but okay, roulette, maybe not yeah. button roulette. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so I need you to roll me a d100. Okay, I guess you... I guess we are playing button roulette. You said you're playing button roulette, so, <laughs> so I'm assuming you're picking a button at random. Yeah. Give me a D100. D100. So I'm not gonna lie, I had no, I didn't think you were actually gonna do it. I have no <laughs> idea what that button is. So <laughs> you pick one then. <laughs> what does this button do? <laughs> <laughs> you said roll. I was expecting you to actually do it. I was expecting you to make an <laughs> argument or something. We're trying to be slightly better players. Um, the DM said roll, so I roll the dice. <laughs> okay, so that would be that color. Um, well, you hear the like subtle popping sound of the thing become or er, of the thing starting to become solid. The large, totally not red button drops down that you have now identified as the go button uh, waiting for waiting to be pressed. I'll press so, it. So, Coke. wait, the button I pressed summons the go button? So, mm -hmm. the, you all have established that if you press a button, the bubble that you're standing in becomes solid, so you can't pass Ow. in or out of it anymore. Right, 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 right. And then the basically, like, confirmation button appears. Right, sorry. And apparently, uh, Feline has activated the start button. Because, sure, that makes perfect yes. sense. This d d is adventures. So, the nope. car just starts rocketing off in a direction. Admittedly, there's only two directions in this hall, but after about ten minutes, you immediately start whipping around corners, and from what you remember of what the Nothic said, apparently also traveling through very short-range portals. So, who the hell knows where you actually are on the planet anymore? I feel like this counts as cool tech. Uh, possibly. Just because uh, we, we have trains on our, on our planet, but not portal jumping trains? So, your last trip took almost, like, half an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. This one is apparently somewhere closer, or is at least closer to some sort of, like, jump points. Because it's very clear that the train is not always jumping. Uh, it does some sort of, like, shift whenever it reaches very specific points. Uh, this trip only takes about five minutes. And you stop at a much more well-lit, uh, basically, like, tube station... Uh, as opposed to all the other ones you've been at where all of the lighting was at best subdued and usually way in the back and as far away from the train as possible. Uh, in this case, it's actually, like, nicely well lit. Uh, your bubble comes in and activates the thing to open up the exit ramp. Uh, it's a very light, cool, misty blue light filling the entire thing. Uh, along one side of the... Uh, exit tube that is opened is a dark purple line and along another side is I need to check because I don't remember ah damn it 
Sorry, I just need to check the color of the other line. Mm. Shut up, Windows 10. I'm not updating to whatever bullshit you want me to update to. Um, oh, oh, good. The thing I'm loading froze. Uh, a very light blue line. So a light blue line and a purple line. Yep. And they're heading in opposite directions? Uh, they are along opposite sides of the tube. You can't see far enough down it to see if they continue down the same path. Hmm. I'm adding it to the notes. Okay. Um, we've not actually seen anyone who's light blue before. We've only seen purple. Yeah. And those were the courtiers. We discussed with the Nothic that to confirm that they don't know like their way around here, right? Or they aren't aware of the knowledge that the Nothic does. Yeah. Um, the Nothic told you sort of a direction he would suggest going in, but that was about it. Uh, also, I'm going to say that you've basically been sitting on this stopped gondola tram thing for about 45 to almost a minute now. 45 seconds to almost a minute now. Um, the bubble itself actually just seems to slowly dissipate. We should get off. Yeah. Um, uh, which side, guys? No, no, it's only one exit. I'm. They are. Oh. They are different colors on the same side of the only exit. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Then okay. I get off the bubble. Yep. Follow. Uh, the bubble disappears, and almost immediately after it disappears, another one pulls up with Krungs inside. Okay. Uh, it's a large collection of purples who just sort of start walking through exactly where you are standing. Like, they don't shove you aside, they just sort of are walking towards you. Are they acknowledging that we exist? Not at all. All right, just kind of stand at the side, then let them pass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nadar? Yeah. Okay, you're doing the same? Yes. I mean... Huh. Do they notice us at all? No, they're not. They do not acknowledge you. Wait. Or what are you no. doing? Yeah, Should sorry. we pull one aside, guys? Uh, we could mention that. Make a decision right now. You have ten right. seconds. You're literally standing in the exit that they can only take. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let them pass. Yeah, let's get out of their way. Okay. Okay. You get out of their way and they just walk past you, not acknowledging that they saw you at all. That works. All right. So, do we pick a path? Wait, which path do they take? Do well, can we see? The purple one. They're purple, and as far as you can tell, they lean towards the purple side up until you can't see them anymore. All right. Cool. So that kind of solves that. A little bit. So, um, do we take a path, or do we stop the next group that comes through and demand that we see their king or something? I mean, so it might be a good idea to not go the same way the big group of people is going, just in case. So maybe follow the light blue corridor, or the light blue side, kind of see where it goes. Um, have we asked the Nothic what, um, like what he knows about their class system? Uh, you have not. Okay, I'm going to turn to him and ask, we like basically say, so we've seen these three colors, and in the gondola we saw these other three colors. What is the structure of their class system? Like, oh. what does each color mean? Oh, it's quite simple. Gold is on top, then orange, then red, then purple, then blue, then green. Okay, so gold, gold, red, red orange, purple, orange. Sorry. Go ahead. Green. Yep. Correct? Red. No, but I already said it once. 
purple. You can just ask him again. I was asking him. I was repeating it back to him and asking, correct? Gold, orange, red, purple, blue, green. Okay, I almost got okay. that. You all had it in order, except that all of you put the orange in a random spot. <laughs> we just kept switching red and orange, that's all. No, all three of you gave a different location for orange. <laughs> well, I've got it correct now. <laughs> Um, so we're good there. So that's the hierarchy. Uh, all right. Um, so blues okay. are pretty low. Well, what do yeah. they do? What does each color's role in society? What is each color's role in society? I'm asking the Nothic like this. He's sort of like looking at you strangely. Like, what do you mean by role? Um. Okay. So gold is at the top. Are they like? A king, a president, or some sort of ch- like hierarchical church leader kind of thing. You haven't spent a lot of time around the Grungs, have you? Absolutely not. We have no idea what church is How not a are. thing that they do. The issue with that is that Grungs exist on other planes and planets, but they don't function the same here necessarily. Because here they have hundreds of thousands of slaves that do what greens would normally do. So their caste structure is a little bit shifted, shall we say. Suffice to say, greens are the lowest. They're generally going to be day laborers, something along that line. Blues are in charge of supervising greens. Purples tend to be Merchants, uh, reds are shamanistic, uh, magic users, oranges are usually warriors or elite guards, and, well, there's only one gold. The king. King might not be an appropriate word. Ruler? They effectively run more like a criminal organization than anything else. Mob boss. That's kind of what I was thinking. Okay. So, it sounds I like what we need down. to do is find, since the slaves do what the greens normally would, is it suffice to say that they all switch up a little bit, like the day labor, like the greens are now kind of in the- The list positions? he gave you is what they do. Okay. Even with the slaves? Yes. So, okay, so the greens are still basically, instead of being manual labor, the greens now oh, are slightly more artisanal labor. Oh, okay. So, we need to find some of these blues. Because if they oversee the manual day laborers, they oversee the slaves, and the slaves is where we need to go, correct? No, the blues oversee the greens. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so, are we going to go get our crew back first, or go like conquer this thing first and then find them? Well, there might be chaos after we conquer, so... Safety in numbers? Yeah. yeah. All right. Maybe have bigger a bigger group to work with? Group. Send some back to the ship so we can actually, like, get away in case somebody dies, you know. There's always a chance, though, that we'll be seen to and create another Esther. Well, we've already been seen. They didn't like, do anything about it. Yeah. That's true. Um... I addressed this to the nothing. Is there a place that they take newly arrived slaves for conditioning, for training? There is. I thought I we it. had a no making me repeat myself rule, didn't we? I thought we did. I know. You have hundreds of. Is there a cert, like, do they, like, assess the slaves? Do they train the slaves? Anything like that? Yes. I feel like that. In yeah, one place. I already told you this. Every slave goes to one place. That's why it makes no sense to try and find your seven people. Well, then, anybody else have any suggestions for how to find our peeps? Because that was my best thought. Just as a reminder, he has actually shown you which button goes there. He just specifically said, this goes to where they keep hundreds of thousands of slaves all at once. Huh. 
for a reminder, it was the, I don't recall that. It was the extremely worn down red button. Well, it sounds like it's our only leak, so we might explore that one. <laughs> oh, God. Bless you. Thanks, sorry. No problem. I don't know, how long is it going to take us to find our people? If we don't have, like, any leads? Probably a lot longer than it should. I know there's safety numbers, but I still think we should go after the top, and that way, after we get- we beat him down, then we and can have somebody lead us. Then just kind of demand our stuff back? Like, hey, yes. you kick your boss's ass. Give us our people back. Yeah. Pretty much. Sounds like a solid enough plan to me. Sounds more like a plan than my plan, so. Alright, so. We're gonna recall a gondola. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which means finding the button. There's, you know where the button in the wall is. You've found them enough times now that it's not actually difficult. Hey, okay. So, recall the gondola. Okay. Before the gondola arrives, though, you've been here talking for like another ten minutes. So, another gondola full of more grungs arrives, this time blues. Step out of the way and let them pass. Um, these ones actually acknowledge you and, like, stare angrily at you as they walk past. Well, obviously they've got an issue with us. Are they just... I'm gonna... Are they just staring? Or are they making... Yeah, they're just staring and, like, walking past, continuing along whatever they were doing. I finger my club menacingly. <laughs> like, obviously? Oh, that's a good just kind of reach for it. Like a stretch, but at the same time. You Like, you know where it is. Yeah. Like, making sure it's within reach. I, I just kind of, I just kind of glare right back at them as they walk, as they like glare at us, like. Oh, look, they get, they do beautiful. Okay, he doesn't notice shit. <laughs> good. Oh, good. That's good to know. Welcome to the channel, a bunch of new people. <clears throat> um, yeah. So no one, they don't seem to notice you, not exactly obviously reaching for your weapon. Oh, good. Just gonna wait until they go, and then I'm gonna call another gondola. Um, they're pretty much... They leave pretty quickly, and their gondola is still there. Can we get on All their right, gondola? Get... Yes. Okay, get on the gondola, press the worn down red button, press the red button to go. Goodbye. Okay. Or no, 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 no. Wait, <coughs> we're going to start. <coughs> No. No. Was, was there, the is there place? a gold button to get us just to the leader? Um, there are <coughs> there are five gold buttons. <coughs> Which one looks most worn, or do they all have the same amount of wear and tear? They are all perfectly goddamn immaculate. I'm gonna ask the Gothic if he knows which button is the right button. I would assume the one at the front of the gondola. That's the one <clears throat> we're going with. Cool. Works for me. Push it. Push the red button. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Big red button. <clears throat> you push it, you push the big red button, and you go. Uh, this is a much, much longer trip. It's actually going to take upwards of an hour. <clears throat> so do we get a short rest, or...? Um, yes, you could get a short rest. You could get a short rest for an hour. And that gives back hit points, right? Uh, you can- I forget how many? You can spend hit dice to regenerate hit points. Eight, right? So you roll a d8 and add your con modifier. And you're fifth level, so you've got five hit dice to expend. Oh. And I believe as a warlock you also gain your spell slots back. Yay. Oh, yep. Um, you didn't have to use all of them. Oh, I'll use the first three. <laughs> <laughs> That's twelve. Yeah. My Not bad. worn down, just annoyed with saying the same things multiple times. What? 
I'm talking to the chat. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so the thing is that if you use all five, that just means that you don't have any left until your next long rest. Alright. Do you want me to roll again, or... I was just going to use the first three. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Cool beans. Okay. Um, otherwise, the trip is largely uneventful, since it's basically just a magic train ride. Uh, after a relatively, well, long amount of time for you, but short considering that from your reckoning you've gone hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands and thousands of miles, uh, it's, it's way shorter than it probably should have been. Uh, you come into a insanely immaculate uh, station where the entire thing is basically just gold and bronze and other uh, like amberish shiny metals. It's all offset a little bit just so that you don't like they're not perfectly polished to a mirror shine so that you're not blinded but everything is shiny and pretty. Looks like we're in the right place then. Mm -hmm. Alright. Flaunting obvious wealth. Sounds like we're in the right place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can uh, I do a perception check to see if, if there's anything that looks off or suspicious? Um, sure. Uh, can you be more specific than just off or suspicious? So... Or, like, where you're looking? I'm looking in the station in general. Um, mostly what I'm thinking about is when we missed the... the groans before. In the ship. Oh, okay, so, like, weird color disturbances that don't quite match? Yeah. Okay, with that, I'll give you a second roll for advantage. Okay. Because it's very difficult to hide stuff in here. Okay. I meant, like, one roll to count as your advantage, but okay. Oh, sorry. Well, either one of those would yeah. be um, Either way... Yeah, with that, you're able to tell that this actually seems to be pretty much what it looks like. A big, opulently polished... It's basically just a perfectly shaped tube that's just very opulent and shiny. With a slightly more... Or slightly smaller, opulent tube as an exit. Okay, well... Um, let's see... To the exit. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, as with pretty much every one of these tubes, you can't actually see how far it goes down just because it's not perfectly level or straight. Uh, so you can see about. 20 feet down before the curve is too much and you just can't actually tell where it goes from there. There are no painted lines in this one, though. Okay. Hmm. So is there a goal? Uh, I'd like to roll a perception check to see if there's any sort of, like, indicator of directions, or, like... There are two directions. The way you just came from and the way forward. Okay, so that it, means it there's is a no signage or anything like that. Just as a reminder, every single hallway you have been in so far has been a straight tube. At I say we far, just go. At yeah. least as far as you know. You didn't actually venture any farther down that last one. Yeah, I say we just... But all of them have been straight tubes with no changes for at least 30 feet until they may... Some of the ones that you were in since then, after 30 feet, would open up into a room, and some would split into two different rooms. Okay. So, we just keep going, I 
Yeah. Let's just yeah, keep forward. Keep going forward. That seems like that's just the only direction we can go. So after about ten more feet, you're able to sort of see it around the curvature of the uh, very, very shiny metallic tube. And you can already tell that there is a massive opulent room uh, just past it, which appears to be mostly, well, not mostly, uh, partially flooded in the same way that that first room you were in was flooded. It comes up to about, like, your shins. Um, but it comes up to, like, middle chest on a grung. Hmm. Okay. If I remember correctly, that didn't do a whole lot for us, or mean a whole lot for us, right? Mm, it, it wasn't an issue for you, no. Okay. It's more there amphibious. True. Um, so I guess going um so if it opens up into a room are there other passages within this room um you haven't quite made it to the oh, room okay. you're just close enough that you can definitely tell that the tube opens up up into a very large bright room okay um, yeah so i guess we just keep going Okay. Uh, I'd like to... Per- mm, actually, never mind. <laughs> Let's just keep going. So, as you enter the room, uh, it becomes clear that it's supposed to be a throne room. You weren't really able to notice the throne initially, because the room is almost 200 feet like from the door you're at to the quote-unquote throne. Okay. Uh, and it's that same sort of eggish oval shape that the first room that you entered into this tree was. Um, So it's probably about 200 feet long and like 160 wide with very slight sloping sides on every edge. Uh, And there is what basically looks like a, to most of you, just like a small child's chair just built out of this weird gold metal that everything in this room seems to be made out of, uh, that is mostly submerged so that only the occupant's head is sticking out of it, uh, with two uh, red grungs sit- uh, not sitting, standing next to the throne, uh, also basically just with their head sticking out of the water. So there are... Two grung, two reds, and then the... And then a uh, large gold grung. Okay. So where, where most grungs are like two feet tall, this one is almost a whole three feet tall. Hoo-wee. Oh, damn. Huh. A giant Start man. tacking it on that extra foot. <laughs> Look, it's important <laughs> to them, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Fair enough. Um, so I'm guessing we literally just walked out into his throat room. Basically. Ah, pretty much, yeah. He can see us. Hmm. Is he? They, have they acknowledged us? Uh, the two red ones are definitely like staring at you with not even like hostility, just sort of confusion. And the gold one doesn't seem to give a crap. That would make sense. Uh, he's basically just sitting there eating what amounts to basically a bowl of some sort of. You actually can't tell what, but it's probably still alive, because it looks like it's moving. I'm good. Huh. Any question their taste of the sucks? They are frogs. Yes, I'm aware of the fact that they're frogs. Please don't dread a mealworm or something. Ooh. Um, okay. So they notice us. Do they say anything? Um, they're just sort of, like, staring at you deeply confused. And eventually one of the red ones just, like, waves you up, like, the hell are you doing? Come up here. I approach the throne cautiously. Go up there. Hello and well met! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Do any of you speak... None of you speak grung. I thought we established this, right? That none of you speak grung. So they look at you and just... 
it's really strange because it, you don't think that the words make any sense to you. Like, there's no way you can replicate them because they're made entirely out of, like, weird echoing throat noises. But it sound it very clearly sounds angry and with, like, the note of a question at the end of almost every one of them. Uh, does... Does the, the Nothic speak Grung? Uh, the Nothic... So, like, do you ask the Nothic that? Yeah, I'm literally gonna be like, do you speak Grung? <laughs> like, I do! <laughs> Can you help us Perfect. translate? Translate? <laughs> They're very confused why, one, you don't why you're not speaking Grung, and, uh, two, why a bunch of slaves just walked into the, <laughs> uh, the, the great leader's room. Okay. Um, we are not slaves. In fact, we are diplomats. Can, can he speak Grung, or does he just understand Grung? He can speak it, and to your thing, he's just like, I will say that. Then I'm going to run. Okay, so we just lost our Nothic? No, not lost. I don't want to die. He says exactly what you said and then, like, dives underwater and just seems to sort of disappear into the water. It's not even particularly murky. Um, and the two uh, red grungs are just like, deeply confused. Like, their faces do not make the same sort of expressions that a human face would, but they're just sort of, like, squinting their eyes, like... What do you mean, not slaves? That, it, it, you're not sure which part they're, like, confused about more than not slaves or the diplomat, because they're just trying to figure out, like, he said a word, and they're sort of, like mouthing the word out more, trying to figure out what he meant. Mm -hmm. Oh, like they don't know what the fuck diplomat means. I feel like their their MO is like subterfuge and stealing and craftiness. So dip, being diplomatic is not on their radar uh, then? At this point, the gold has sort of like stopped eating, has begun paying attention and sort of looks down at all of you. And is he actually looking down at us, or is, does he just kind of look like he's looking down? In that, he, it's very particular. Uh, he's actually shorter than you, but you definitely get a feel like he is trying to look down at you. Okay. Like, he's not looking at your faces. Um, he's, he's doing that looking down is no shit. He's looking at your feet, but in such a way that he's making it clear that that's where you should be. It's like down on the ground. Not, like, staring at your feet like, please don't kill me, more just like, why are you standing before me? And actually just stands up and just smacks all each one of you across the face once, and I need you to make con saves. Oh, Nadar's good at con, not really at all. <laughs> Nadar. Yes! Please, darling Feline, that's wonderful. Uh, Nadar! I would not be cowed. One, you're currently charmed. Uh, on the upside, you do speak Grung now, albeit temporarily. Translate all of us? No, 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 just no me. only just Nadar. Just me, because I okay. failed my con save. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the rest of you are not aware that, uh, Nadar is charmed, but Nadar is charmed. Yeah. So, basically, you need to follow his orders unless he asks you to do something suicidal. Okay. Um, uh, but only for about the next minute. Okay. Okay, so, six minutes. Why are you in my throne room? Oh, so I'm answering yeah. for everybody now? No, he's asking you, because he's, like, looked at the other two and realizes they can't understand, uh, <laughs> Grung. What a jerk. <sighs> we are in your throne room, because earlier today we've landed, and we're met by a party 
of some of your fellow grums who poisoned us, stole our crew, and left us to die. And we would very much like our crew back. Oh, I know who you... Okay. Well, Mr. Charmed Scale thing. Nadar. Whatever. I need you to do me a good favor then, as we are now such good friends. I need you to uh, grab the magic-y one standing next to you and uh, hold her steady for a minute. Um, so oh, no. I'm gonna reach for stuff then. Can I make I a deck save? Sort of fight? I'm sorry, what, Haley? Can I put up any sort of fight against his charm or no? No, because you already failed. The, the con save was your attempt to put up well, a fight. Well, I'm gonna reach slowly for Steph then. Let me be more specific then. Hold her to the ground right now. Right. Can I make a deck save when I see her reaching for me? Um, it's gonna be basically a contested deck save between the two of you. Alright. Okay. I think I win. What the hell? <laughs> All right, so I attempt to reach for the magic key one and uh, hold her to the ground. Um, to which he's just clearly annoyed now and just uh, commands the other two to hold back the big angry demony thing. That's and me. <laughs> I am angry and demony. The uh, hell? So they basically just block you away from the other two. And Haley, uh, I am just gonna be taking your actions then. Uh, the two of you are now trying because you're trying to come up with excuses to not follow a very explicit command. Well, I reached. He never specified his speed. <laughs> yes, that is that is very clever. Let me correct myself and explain that the way that charm works is that you feel as though this person is a good friend who you need to do everything in your power to help. That's what charm does. Okay, well maybe you should have started with that. You know what charm does. Okay. The two of them are basically going to try and grab Feline and push her to the ground. Uh... Because now they're not, like, jumping at you. This is just going to be a uh, strength check. He is aiding you, uh, Nadar, so you're going to get advantage on it. Who is he? You want to explain that? The gold grung. Okay. You just said the two of them. Yes. And the other two thems in the room were the red ones. Yes, who are actively trying to keep uh, Elsina back from you two. Oh, I see. Yeah, see? I'm not so make another one. Confused. Yes, make it. This one is a strength check. Yeah. I was going to say, can I try to strength check? Oh. Sorry. Oh. Uh. <laughs> well. So with that, they basically hold you down, and he starts grabbing at your arm. Uh, for Wait, you. underwater now? Uh, That's where the ground is. Uh, yeah, she's underwater, but not, like, holding head, more just holding her body there, so... It's not fun, but you're definitely able to get oxygen. Can I must try to muscle my way over there? Um, you can try. Strength check my way over there? You can try. Uh, would it just be a regular strength roll? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Does that work to kind of muscle my way over there? Uh, no, because it's opposed, so they get to roll. Do, 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 do. Um, these are the wrong grungs. Where are the right grungs? There they are. Do, do, do. With advantage, because there's two of them, so they're aiding each other. Okay. So, no, you are perfectly able to push past them. However, I need you to make a con save, because to push past them, you had to touch their skin. 
And that is one too little. Um, Am I now poisoned? You are, except that unlike Nadar, it's not gold poison, it's red poison. Um, which, mercifully for you, uh, you have to eat any food that is within reach and use your entire action doing so. There is a bowl of squirming bugs. <laughs> That's not also, really possibly any rations you have. Oh, God. Okay, is this my... <sighs> yes, yeah, so you have to use the remainder of your action to basically just sit down and eat food. Fine. I sit on his throne and I stuff my face. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's pretty um, much ignoring you. Uh, he's grabbing at Feline's arm How? and is Sorry. quietly chanting something. Yeah. Wait, Dude, is, uh, how fast is he moving? Uh, he's holding, you're being held down by Nadar and he's already on your arm. Yeah, damn. He helped Nadar I bring can't. you down. Shit. Well, he I can't roll, pull like so an Eldritch he Blast. Haley, that's why Real you had quick. advantage. Is because he was assisting you. I didn't roll with advantage. I told you to roll with advantage. Oh, well, I did. She still won because I only <laughs> had a strength of six. That's why I didn't make her re roll, <laughs> do a second roll. Um, this, this charm lasts a minute, right? Yes. If he's quietly chanting, can I real quick blast him? Like, try and force him back? Um. Is there enough time for that? Not really. One, because you aim with your hands, and he's standing, like, to one side and holding your arm. But can she rotate her wrist? I or can do it. have her hand out? He's, so, he's, st I'm trying to do this in a way that I can show chat and you, and also with my own arm. He's holding her, ar her like, arm here. There's no way to rotate a wrist like that towards someone who is outside, like, holding your arm. Um, Am I able to cast Chill Touch? You still have to aim Chill or... Touch. Yeah. I can't just think of it. <laughs> no. Uh, All right. Chill Touch, if I recall correctly, has a somatic, a something, and uh, a verbal component. I think you also need to be holding like your spell focus for it, too. All right. Um, Is there any chance I can struggle again before he finishes? No. Okay, I'm out. Okay, to be clear, I'm trying to do this to fucking help you, goddammit. <laughs> All right. Um, I didn't. His chanting only lasts about ten goddamn seconds, so a round, for fuck's sake. And he draws out uh, the partially grown slad from out of your arm. It's incredibly painful, and you're going to take uh, 1d10 damage, but it leaves your body before it can eat you alive. Well, thank you. But... Uh, well, after he draws out this strange little tadpole thing, he presses one finger against its forehead and draws a small shard of something and puts it into the gem resting on his crown. Uh, at this point, I'm relatively certain that the one minute is up, so... Uh, so Nadar can no longer understand Grung and is no longer forced to obey him, uh, but he shouts something to the red ones that you don't understand. They quickly cast a spell and he throws the slad into the spell that they cast. It's just a large, slowly orbiting uh, ball of light of some sort. Okay. All right, I'm confused. Why did they help? I mean, none of you speak Grung now. Well, we're not Where's our damn translator? Come back here. I was about to say, we're not dead, so start. I mean, so he basically goes back to his throne and sort of kicks the large demon thing in the shin until it gets out of his throne. <laughs> you could have just 
you don't understand Grung. There's always the whole gesture thing, like... He makes a very clearly rude gesture in your direction and starts pointing off his throne. That I understand, versus the kicking me in the shins part. Probably because you can't really feel it. Grr. Bigger than he is. Okay, so you're Um, just gonna sit in his chair? No, I'm gonna get up and, like, drop the bowl of bugs that I was eating out of. I mean, he's pretty pissed about that, as far as you can tell, but (laughs) it's unclear. Um... Pretty much after you, he removes you from his chair, uh, he seems to press a button on the throne. It was just so... There's so... Uh, a good amount of like small buttons on there that even if you tried, you couldn't press one individually because your hands are just too big. Uh, shout something again at his strange shamans. And a like, two-foot-thick wall of water just sort of surrounds his chair. And the two of them are now quite angry with you and quite happy with trying to put their very pointy sticks inside your bodies. Oh, good, and here comes that. Well, we needed a fight. (laughs) Yay! It's been a while. (laughs) Yeah, it has. All right. Roll initiative? Yes. Initiative. Initiative. Uh, turn order. Oops. Oops. No, don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Do not worry about the turn order thing. I'm adding you manually because you have to have tokens to make it work. Okay. okay. Yes, they are there, but I don't know if they're even tied to you anymore. I'll see I rolled really low and my initiative was better than yours, y'all. Miriam, initiative is based on dex. My dex sucks. I have a dex of 12. You both have a dex of 12, or We both have terrible dexes, if I remember correctly. I'm, like, brawny, but not not dexterous at all. Am I the most with the 15? I think so, yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, none of you are particularly dexterous. No. Um, Grung Kingpin has an 11. Do, do, do. Oh, shit. That was wrong. And then there are the other two. Where are they? There they are. Wow, okay, so one of them trips over his own goddamn feet. (sighs) And got a natural one. So he done fucked up. And the other one got a 19. Shit. All right. All together average. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Okay, now then. Oops, that's wrong. No, descending. Excuse me. There we go. So, one of the Grung Wildlings is going to be going first. Uh, then it's going to be Alcina, the Kingpin, uh, Feline, Nadar, then the one Wildling who's going to get its first turn skipped. Um, the first Grung Wildling is going to cast Jump. Uh, The bot is strange. It's best not to question it. It's partially insane. Uh, Is going to cast Jump and basically launch itself about 25 feet up in the air and stick to part of the wall up there and just be screaming obscenities down at you, you assume, because it's clearly screaming something. I'm sorry, what? Huh? Hmm? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, Alcina, you're next. I'm gonna throw my scale warp blade at it. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> it's a boomerang. Why the hell not? Okay. Is it 
I'm hoping that hits. With a 22? Yeah, I'm yes. assuming that's going to yes, hit. Yes, that hits. <laughs> cool. How did it roll? Da- wow. You rolled a 1 on your part of your damage. Did I really? Yes, you did. What the bull- ah. Well, <laughs> Miriam, you've got a plus 4. How the hell did you roll only 9 damage without rolling a 1? Mm. Uh, so yes, that that hurt a fair amount of them. That, um, where the hell have I put his stupid character sheet? That's the wrong character sheet. There we go. Um, yeah, that one is, you threw that at the one on the ceiling? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is definitely well damaged. Oh, good. Um... Okay. Um, it's still up there and just sort of, like, staring daggers down at you now. As long as uh, it's not throwing them. The Grown Kingpin is next, who is, at best, sort of standing around kind of lazily. Isn't it behind a two-foot wall of water? Or yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of, like, sitting on its throne, like hands behind its head, just like, hmm. And at one point just sort of gets, looks like he gets a little bit bored with watching this. And fire, I actually didn't pick one of you, hang on. So Miriam, Stephanie, Haley is one, two, three. So let's try this again, since I didn't actually set that beforehand. Firing at Haley is going to attempt to fire his uh, short bow through the wall of water at Haley. Uh, it should be said before I forget that this is not, like, water that is holding a shape. Oh. It is water that appears to be flowing upwards like a reverse waterfall. And it's kind of solid. Rolls, then. Would that make his arrow less effective, though? Use attack. Why are you not... Yes, this is an attack. Let me use the attack. This is really weird. It's not letting me just use the attack that I already put in. Fine, then. Oh, there it is. I'm pretty sure an 8 doesn't even come close to your armor class. Nope. Yeah, that's about what I was thinking. Um, a An arrow just sort of skates through the water and doesn't come anywhere even sort of near you. Oh my goodness. I apparently clicked it so many times. There we go. I had a bunch of things showing up that were attempts to roll damage, apparently, that I just didn't notice. Um, so yeah, a an arrow just sort of like scrapes through the water and lands somewhere around your feet and bounces off the metal floor without doing anything even sort of scary. Uh, Feline, you are up. You have a small hole in your hand, but otherwise mostly fine. Sorry, arm. Alright, I'm going to cast... Eh, I'll just blast at the kingpin. Oops. Not that one. Uh, you will have disadvantage for that. Oh, shoot, because he's... All right, I change it to the one grung on the ceiling. Okay. We're going to have some toasted frogs. Yay! I don't think that's that's force damage. I don't think you're doing any toasting at all. I think you're doing squishing. Mm. Ooh, shit. I'm sorry, Odin's son. Okay, you went a little bit beyond squishing. Yay! Um, Let me do some real quick math. I, um, how have I lost, how have I lost the wildling? God damn it. Uh, okay. He is doing much less good after that one. (laughs) Uh, in fact, he basically falls off the wall and splats loudly into the ground and takes his remaining two health and falling damage. Ooh, that was more than ten times his height in fall. 
and he splatted against about two feet of water. Ow. Surface tension is a bitch. Yes, it is. Especially when you're a whole two feet tall. Yeah. Uh, Nadar, you're up. All right. Nice job. Um, so I'm going to take out the uh, other red one that's currently on its face in the water. Right? Um, or did it get up? It got back. Sorry, that was just me. It was just more like, did it, it, did it actually fall prone and have to spend the next turn it got getting up? Um, so it didn't fall prone so much as just it rolled a one in the initiative, so for some reason its brain has sort of short-circuited and isn't going to do anything this round. Okay. I didn't know if it had tripped or fallen, so I was just curious. Um, so yeah, we'll do two soul knives to the face. There's one. God damn it. What is that? There's two. <laughs> Yay! Does the 14 hit? Um, the 14 does hit, because none of them have had time to cast any spells. 16 damage. Yep. Damn. Whoop! When it had, the other one had 27 in health. That's what I get for telling you how much falling damage it took. Yeah, I know. It actually would have taken probably closer to, like, 20-something falling damage, but... eh. (laughs) Falling damage escalates quickly, especially when the fall is ten times your height. Yeah, that's not gonna end well. Yeah. And I'm assuming this is, like, a uncontrolled, spread-eagled fall versus Mm -hmm. a clean dive into the water. Like a belly flop. Oh, God. That's when surface tension's a bitch. Yeah. Um, So up next would be the Grung Wildling, who is stunned and also now has daggers of psychic energy inside his head. Uh, So I guess now it's Elsina. Okay. I'm going to hit the uh, Grung Wildling with my Warhammer. Okay. I um, kill it. I think that kills it. Yes, it's basically <laughs> flat. It's a pancake. Now. Yeah, it's basically a pancake. <laughs> um, on the upside, that means that a full round of combat has finished. Um, which is good, because whatever the hell it is that they did to the... Um, the strange spell that they cast on the slad slad, uh, appears to have massively accelerated its growth. Uh, So the bubble, or the strange sort of like glowing energy thing just sort of drops, and a uh, very, very large green slad just sort of schlorps out of uh, where this tiny little tadpole that formerly fit in your arm uh, had been about 10, 20 seconds ago. So, ew? Uh, Pretty much. Um, Let me see if I can get a quick good image of a green slad. I mean, it's no longer in feline. Well, it was a tadpole. but Now it's fully grown. But it means we can kill it. Without killing Feline. This one's mine. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, is this going to show the image? Damn it, no it's I not. I mean, like, have at it, darling. Oh, oh makes... dear, yeah. Oh, that's what we're going to show. This one's dead. I'm just going to throw this up on the overlay real quick. So that everyone can see what a green slat looks like. Ugh. Yeah, they're, they're a thing. That's really ugly. Ugh. Um, this is what happens when anyone is infected by slads and has magic. You make a green slad instead of a red or a blue. I'm good. <laughs> it's even more terrifying as big as that. Yeah. Oh, good. We need to... Let's, let's put the kill on it. Yeah. Why does it have a monkey on its shoulder is my question, though. Uh, because they're normally in jungles. Oh. Because they're also sort of froggish. Where kind of I put my own steroided? Like, you took a little froggy and you stuck it in a tank of steroids for a couple of days? Just a few. Just Only a few. few. Only a few. 
Um, but yes, uh, you're very clearly able to tell that it's some sort of frickin' magic user. Uh, beyond that, not a heck of a lot. Also, that it's very powerful. Cool. Cool. Okay. Um, it is going to basically be at the bottom of the initiative, because it slurped out of the tube, or out of the, 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 the orb, and is taking a few minutes to sort of recover and understand that it has a full-sized adult body all of a sudden, which mm -hmm. normally takes less than a day, but still an amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means that the kingpin is up next, who is happily laughing to himself and uh, at your expense. Turns out, laughter, even when a species communicates almost entirely by strange, awful, deep, resonating sounds, uh, still translates pretty well. Okay. Uh, he's also going to, laughter. again, attempt to uh, shortbow one of you through the water hole. <laughs> um, okay. This time, Feline. Uh, does an 11 hit you? Uh, it does not, no. Even though you don't have mage armor on? I thought I cast it in the last one. I was going to see if been... you remembered, yeah. <laughs> yes, I did uh, remember because I thought for, about it. Mage armor lasts eight, for eight, eight hours, eight. right? Uh, da, 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 I think so. Stat, you also fed the thing. I did feed the thing! Because I made it, I remember making a comment about, like, hey, Steph, you've got a second, right? You should feed the thing. There's lots of meat around. <laughs> but uh, legitimately, how long does mage armor last for? Because I don't know. Uh, it ends if the target dons armor, or if you dismiss the spell as an action. Uh, it should have a... That's not right. Yeah. Yeah, it should have a time on it as well. Hang on. Innate for one day. Really? That's what it says. Oh, no. I know. Duration is an hour. Oh. Yeah, that's your thing about being able to cast it once a day. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, because you don't use spell slots to cast it because crazy warlock cheaties. Hey. Okay. okay. So yes. Uh, so no, so he needs to get a nineteen or more to hit you, or an eighteen or more to hit you. Yep. Okay. So he's gonna have to try a little bit harder. I mean, he's okay. still laughing, like <laughs> really, really laughing. Uh, Feline. It's my turn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a large, angry, uh, uh, parasitic frog thing, and a smaller, angry, other parasitic frog thing. They're just parasitic in different ways. Alright, how far away is the green one? Uh, the green one is basically, like, two feet away from you. All of us? You're, yeah, you were all sort of, like, clumped up and fighting. You, none of you spread out after the sort of, like, scuffle at the very mm. beginning. Okay. Let's work then. Oops. We don't have a thing for that. Alright. I'm just gonna go blast for this... The, the slat or the Actually, kingpin? wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I should have added another d10 to that last one. <laughs> Oops. Uh, remember um, that the way the that you do that is because you fire a second beam, so you have to roll to hit with the other beams, too. Right. So just roll the attack multiple times, basically. 1d20 to hit. Uh, the kingpin. With disadvantage? Uh, yes. Well, no, just use the attack one just, that you already have built in. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, just roll it multiple, or just use it multiple times. Okay. And that one hit, right? I believe so. Yes, it did. Because he basically doesn't have armor. Oh. That one did not hit. Oh, I could have had a 20. <laughs> so Dang he, it. So he takes three force damage as he gets sort of, like, booped into the back of his chair. Okay. 
To which he returns to making the same rude gesture he made to uh, Alcina when she wouldn't get out of his chair. I make it back. I don't think he can really see you all that well through the water. Still make it back. Okay. Alright. Staff cares not. <laughs> uh, Nadar, you're up next. Perfect. Uh, will so my soul knives have dis disadvantage through the water? Uh, yes. Pretty much everyone will have, uh, everything will have disadvantage to the water until you go through it or make it go away. What about my psychic? Uh, yes. So, in this case, the disadvantage is more because you have to try and aim around it. Oh, okay. But like I said, it, you will all continue to get disadvantage until either you make the water go away or until you try and move through it. Uh, the thing is, Nadar is not going to get real close to him, because Nadar's got really shitty constitution, uh, <laughs> and does not want to be uh, charmed again. Did not enjoy that experience. <laughs> Although it was useful being able to understand now, it didn't Oh, um, I'm wrong. Sorry, it doesn't affect spells. So... I'm going to say that, Feline, you're going to get the full 20 there. Woo, okay. Hey, that's exciting. Yeah. Nice. Sorry, it only affects ranged weapons. So gotcha. things like throwing your soul knives, yes. But using your psychic would be fine. Because it's just that the water actually screws up the stuff. Sorry, I misread something. Okay. So wait, only ranged weapons? Only ranged weapons, yes. Okay. Psychic hammer it is. I don't remember how Psyche Tower yeah, works, yeah. but okay. <laughs> oh, bring the pain, yes. girl. Um, what the hell? Oh, I... Get my sheets out again. <laughs> do you remember what happens if he fails the strength saving throw? Uh, I think it has something to do with the amount of damage. Oh, it's whether or not he gets knocked back. Oh, yeah, right. Which, there isn't really anywhere to, for him to knock, oh? get back, knock, to get knocked back for, but still. Uh, does that meet your, nope. uh, spell save? No. What's your spell save? I thought it was... If it's a strength... I thought it was a strength contest. Um, yeah, no, no, he makes a strength check, but it's based on your spell save. What's spell based on again? So it's 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus whatever your int bonus is. Oh, wow. So 8 plus 3 plus whatever your int. No, it doesn't. He just fails. Okay, what is your spell save? Uh, 8 plus 3 plus 3. So, so 14. 14? Yep. Okay. So he gets knocked, like, another foot back into the wall, and takes... 20. 12 plus 9. What's 12 plus 9? 20. Uh, it's, a lot. it's 21. Thank you. Yeah. Takes 21 damage. Ooh. And 20 from Feline. Okay. Okay. Um. Damage? Does he actually look at all inconvenienced by the amount of damage he's taken? Um, he looks quite perturbed. Makes sense. Um, let me check his stats. He is definitely bloodied by the amount of damage he's taken. Yay! Okay. Um, so next would be the end of the initiative, which means it's Slad's turn. Um, Slad is kind of annoyed that you all just sort of forgot about him. Uh, especially you, wonderful former host. Mommy, why did you forget about me, Mommy? Mommy, why? Uh, yeah, so his response is basically just to look over at, uh, Feline and hurl a f very small fireball at your head. Wow, that was some shit damage, considering what he can roll. And he failed to hit anyway. What the hell? Good. Um, well, that was basically his turn, though he is going to sort of move away from all of you. That was one be. Uh, he's going to move like 30 feet away from you and then just turn back and stare daggers at you. All right. Uh, Alcina. Okay, um, I am going to hit, uh... The golden 
uh, slad. Okay. With, or excuse me, golden grung with my warhammer. Okay. And How? Oh, <laughs> that's gonna hit. Um, you kay. just have to. You just have you, to get there. To do that, you have to move through the wall of water. Oh, then I move through the wall of water and hit him. Give Please. me a con check. <laughs> oh, honey, now. Um, so basically, you walk into this wall of water, and for some reason, you were just sort of expecting it to be like walking through a waterfall, and then you realize that it's actually about a foot thick, and that it's a waterfall going up. So you take a step into it, and your foot sort of starts pushing away from the ground. You're like, okay, I think I can, like, deal with this. And you take a few steps more uh, into it, and you're having to take these tiny steps to sort of shuffle through. And by the time you're entirely encompassed in the water, you go, oh shit, I didn't take a deep breath. And f basically, try and breathe, your flailing ends up sort of losing you control, and you just sort of get launched rever uh, against gravity up through this anti-waterfall and come back down a few feet away. Mm. Cool. I mean, if you and have... I wasted that nat 20. I mean, if you have a different action you would like to take, or if you would like to use your action to move into his wall again... I'm good. I'm gonna... Am I prone, or am I... No, you're fine. It was basically just a, like, you got knocked back out of the wall. Um, it didn't even throw you up high enough to make you take any sort of falling damage or anything. You just sort of got, like, oh, shit, what's going on? And it wasn't, like, slipping, but it was definitely, like, okay, this could have gone way worse. Also, remember to breathe in before walking into water. Interesting. Okay, then, how, let me check something really quick. Um, oh, good. Uh, how far away is the green slab from me? Uh, now about 30 feet. Perfect. Can I still attack with my yes. scale warped blade? Yes. I'm gonna throw my scale warped blade. Okay. Does a 14 hit? Uh, it does not. It bounces off of its shell. Or not shell, its uh, skin. Like, it doesn't even deflect, it just sort of, like, bounces off. And I rolled a net. Yep. Okay. Well, that ends what I can do, so cool. Okay. Um, the sword still comes back to you, even though it bounced off rather ineffectually. Cool. It doesn't Sorry. always come back, remember, uh, no, if I you know. don't land a hit. Yeah. I know. Sometimes it... Yeah. It flies off somewhere else. It's it goes boring. away. Uh, Grum Kingpin, still laughing quite happily about this, and at this point, sort of like sticks his head into the wall and like tries to blow bubbles and then remembers that he can breathe water and ends up sort of like just breathing out more water into the water. So it looks really dumb, but he's still just like sitting there taunting you with his head in the wall. He's essentially trying to blow a raspberry at us. No, he's trying to do a, like, imitation of this goofy-ass thing that just drowned, almost drowned in his, uh, wall of water. But it doesn't work very well when he can breathe water. Uh, so he's just gonna fire off a short bow again at one of you all. Okay. Uh, apparently he's just gonna fire one of one at each of you a turn. Uh, cause that is at Elsina. <laughs> With disadvantage... I'm pretty sure an eight doesn't hit you. Uh, not at all. Yeah, like, that's what I thought. Not anywhere near close to hitting me. It it was worth a try. Uh, Feline. Yeah. So, I'm gonna do shatter. Okay. So, each creature in a ten foot radius sphere centered on that it must make a con saving throw. So where are you focusing it? Oh, sorry, at the green sled. Okay. So it needs to make a con saving throw? Yeah. 
Okay. So desperate for a fight. That is against my con, right? Or... No. So whenever a spell is asking you to make a, asking people to make a con save, it is against your spell save. So in your case, ah, uh, that's yeah. Yeah, in your case, but... your, your spell save is um, eight plus your proficiency plus your charisma bonus. Gotcha. Oh, well, it only is a fifteen, but on a fail save, it takes half, half as much damage. Um, and it's half of a 3d8 okay. thunder damage. So you still get to roll the 3d8. So. So it takes four. four, and even from that damage, it's pretty clear that to you that it didn't even take uh, as much as it should have from that. All right. So magic doesn't do quite as well. At least thunder magic doesn't. Yeah. Um, up next, Nadar. All right. Really quick of character. Did you say Feline's spell thing was A plus proficiency plus charisma? Hers is charisma. So okay. it's whatever your spellcasting ability is. If you have the the real character sheet, there's a thing on the spell page for uh, spell saves. Okay. I just was putting it down. So that way, in case we forgot. Yeah, it's just whatever stat your class uses for casting spells. Okay. So I... So there's the slad, and then there's the... Grumpin King... Kingpin? Kingpin, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, he's still buying his wall of water, right? Yep. Okay, I'm going to um, throw a couple soul knives at the slad. At the slad? Okay. That no, didn't hit, probably. That did not hit. That did. That did. Ooh. Nice. Look at you. Good job. Um. Do, 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 do. Uh, so unlike the thunder damage, it definitely seems to take full damage from that, and looks quite unhappy at you. Uh, and I believe that means the next turn goes over to the slad. Uh, whose response is going to be nice and calm and measured. Uh, did I actually enter what the spell does? I did not, because I'm dumb. Um, it is going to cast Fireball. At me. Yeah. The dark. Yes. Because I just hit it with some sick. Well, there's, there's a secondary benefit to that. Um, you're all still standing basically five feet from each other. Uh, and everything within 20 feet is going to be affected by the fireball. No. Oh. Well, no, okay. no, didn't. Uh, Alcina moved. Alcina moved. Alcina moved into the water and then got knocked back out of the water. Okay, I didn't uh. realize how close we were. We're not to the throne. Yeah, you were basically standing right next to the throne. Okay. Um. So I mean, it'll hit the water wall too. Uh, so I need all of you to make dexterity saving throws. Oh, so he's not doing the same spell he did last time. No, that was a, uh, that was just hurl fire. Which is just oh a thing God, you can do I for some reason. Oh my God, I suck. I did. You didn't get below a 10. No. That's my That's true. for suckage. Uh, wait, I have the monster manual. I can just check it here. Because apparently I didn't write down whatever his spell save was because I'm dumb. This would actually be not too bad, except that I also don't remember what stat he uses for casting spells. Do 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 do. Oh, so good news. Everyone but Elsina uh, was well past the spell save. Did I pass the spell save? No. 
Awesome. How much damage am I taking? Uh, well, everyone is taking damage. What was the deck save for then? Uh, whether you take full or half. Oh. So, uh, Nadar and Feline are taking half of 29 fire damage. Oh. Alcina okay. is taking 29 fire damage. Also, who made that squeak? What squeak? So I like, was sold. Oh, that, okay, it came through the mic. It's just like a, oh... Oh, Sorry, I... awful squeak thing. So that's 15 for Felina. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, no, it's, uh, 14. You get the lower number. Oh, perfect. Um, Alcina, how much health do you have? I'm at 18. Apparently you're... No, no, Alcina. Oh. Oh, I just took 29. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? Do you want to? But the question is, do you want to know what my health damage is now, or what my total health should be? It was more of how I much have, health do you I have, have left? Thirteen out of forty-four. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, and yes, as I think a tank. as <laughs> Cat pointed out, uh, this impacts into the firewall that is now going to be forever known as Steam Wall because it's gone. Uh, the I forgot to roll for the grung. He passes his saving throw, so he takes an amount of damage. Um, it, you're not able to tell exactly how or how much, but it's pretty clear that he did not take the full uh, damage that he should have taken from the fireball, probably because the wall absorbed a fair amount of the damage. Mm -hmm. But he is definitely looking more haggard than he was before. Also, less protected. Uh, Alcina, you are up. So, if even though my scale warp blade is a melee weapon, if I throw it, is it a ranged weapon? It is a ranged weapon. The wall is gone. I no, 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 no. This is about something else. I so just needed to know that. It is a melee weapon. Unless you throw it, then, is a ran then it is a ranged weapon. That's what I thought. Okay. What um, are you doing? I'm making a decision as to what I'm going to do. I'm just trying to figure out what you could be doing that need that changes based on whether or not that's a melee weapon or not. I might have misunderstood something. Oh no, I didn't, so we're fine there. <clears throat> um, I'm going to hit the Golden Grung okay. with my Warhammer. Okay. That is him. not a crit. But it does hit him, though. Uh, yes. Yes, it does. Okay, and so I'm going to also utilize Divine Smite. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use it as a first level spell slot, so I'm going to roll an additional 2d8 of damage. Okay. I assume that is radiant damage or not? Uh, yes, that is radiant damage. Okay. It's not necrotic because you're a blackguard? I actually don't know, I'm just asking. Uh, no, I'm not using the ability that I okay. can do necrotic damage for. Okay. Okay. So, he takes 20 total damage. Um... And Is it dead yet? you stove in his skull. Oh, good. That's um, nice to know. You also kind of bent his crown, which he probably would be annoyed about, but he's dead now. I'm taking the crown. Okay. Just picking up the crown? I wouldn't put that on. No, no, I'm sticking it in my backpack. Well, so, you sure about that? Because you feel something immediately after picking it up. Oh, fuck. Uh -huh. Oh, fuck. Do I have the power now? What do you mean, do you have the power <laughs> You're not He-Man, no. <laughs> Or Shira. Um, no, you just feel that there is an innate magic to part of this crown, though it's definitely not the broken part. Okay. Like I said, I'm putting it away for later. I'm not gonna just stick a random crown that I just found on my head. This I is think not you should stick it on your head, but okay. What? 
I never said stick it on your head. I just said that the crown isn't magic. I said that part of the crown is magic. Yes, the, like, stone thingy that came out of the slab. No, no, no. The stone was already there. Also, you did not see that. You were being distraught by uh, eating a bunch of bugs. Uh, No, the stone was already there. He pulled something out of the slab's head and added it to the stone. Oh, excuse me. That's what I was... Okay. Okay, so I smashed his brains in and took his crown. (sighs) Yes, you did. Cool. Cool. Well, that would be his turn, but he's dead. So, uh, okay. Feline. Deal with your offspring, child. <laughs> uh, that's Just pretty. wondering. Uh, hmm. Would it be possible for Elsina to toss me that crown? Or would I have to wait for her to cycle um, again? You can basically go up and try and get her to... Well... So you can talk as a free action, but you could go up and use your action to try and take the crown, and if she lets you, then it would just be totally fine, or you could have to use your action to, like, try and take it from her. I'm stronger than you are, so I don't know how that'll go. I mean, like I said, you can also just go up and talk to her. Yeah. Can I, can I take the crown? Can you toss up me that crown, please? The crown, the, cr- the, that crown the crown that the kingpin was wearing, you know, that crown? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only crown. To you instead of yeah. it. That, yes, please. I just can, I Y'all just... are like ten feet away. <laughs> I somehow managed to get the crown over to Feline. Feline has the crown. <laughs> okay, Feline, right. what are you trying to do with the crown? Can I use my action to, like, touch the stone and see if... It somehow controls the sled? Uh, yes, you can. It's not even an action. It's just, like, in, it's just ca- touching it. in catching the stone that she threw at you, or the crown that she threw at you, since it wasn't Elsina's turn, so she couldn't move. Uh, <laughs> just brushing your hand along the stone, uh, you can actually feel every single slad on uh, this planet, and maybe more, but you're for sure every single one on this planet. Oh, good. Do I feel control over it, or just feel their presence? Uh, you do, and in fact, this one, which you had been fighting and had been throwing fireballs and shit, uh, just, like, as soon as you touch the gem, uh, just sort of, like, slackens. Ha ha ha, you are mine now. Are we done? Well, yes, you are. You're more magical than I am, so this <laughs> makes more sense. You well, happy? you didn't actually touch the gem. All right. Um, yeah, so good job, guys. Um, so you are immediately, uh, while in contact with the stone, able to feel that there are a lot of slads on uh, this planet. In fact, you can also, to a very, very small extent, sort of tell where slad offspring are, though you can't control them, like the little tadpoles. Oh, okay. Uh, but you can feel pretty much every slad on this planet. Well, that uh, solves the problem. And you can't see directly through their eyes, but you have this sort of, like, perception of place. Mm-hmm. And you feel like there's a large grouping of them uh, in a cavern that's even bigger than this one, bigger than any cavern you've ever seen, surrounding what you're pretty sure are just all of the slaves. Alright, so we have a... Hmm? Um, Sorry, in addition to that, basically you just feel like there are tons and tons of just slads all over, and they're basically just guards everywhere. And everyone's guards just briefly went really slack and then stood back up for a second. Or stood back up immediately. Alright. So that's one objective down. Uh, So... Should I have the slads turn against the grunts? I like that thought. <laughs> Nadar? Uh, Any thoughts? You're the one with the power. <laughs> you do what you think's best. <laughs> You've got the power. Uh, yeah. 
Hmm. I mean, I think we just, there's one gold one, and I just smashed its head in with a hammer. Right, so... I think we're in charge. Which is wonderful. I think we're in charge. (laughs) That was... Um, I may... Am I able to sort through the sleds and see if any of them see Dragonborn? Or is it um, just a mass that I just So, have? you're able to focus on this one immediately in front of you? But all of the ones that you don't have any sort of, like, direct connection with, you just have a very general feeling for. But I can still control them, or just um, you can give them, where they are. You can give them very basic commands. You are innately aware of where they are, and you have a basic idea of not necessarily their perceptions, but what people have told them to perceive about things. So, like all of the ones in this area that you were feeling uh, have been told that they are to stand here and protect slaves and stop slaves from escaping. So, through that, you're able to assume, okay, this is where all the slaves are then. I guess basically the best way to say it is that you can find them, you have a vague sense of the area they're in, and you know whatever orders they were given. All right. So, I say we make our way down to the slave pit and go from there. Works for me. Oh, right. does our Nothic ever come back? Yeah, pretty much as soon as uh, you picked up the gem, he sort of popped out of the water and stopped being invisible. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you again, man. Yeah, he was on All the right. way far side of the room. Hmm. How nice. It's just like, I see you control all of the slads, and you're not dead. Wonderful! That was the idea. Yeah. That was the plan. Now let's go. Alright, let's go save the crew. Okay. I think we are going to end off there. Uh, I probably should have done this a while ago, but you all level up to six. Woo! Oh. Whoop, whoop. Eat. Um, you might want to leave a note for yourself. What are you doing with the green slat in that room? Taking him with us. Okay. Is he, our, is he our new pet? Yes, he is. Um, so, remind me when we start then that the Nothic is going to have to info dump a little bit on you about slads. Okay, perfect. Uh, because there are probably going to be some maybe issues with that. Taking with us? Um, more just dealing with... So look, I'm going to info dump on you right now, and I'll do it again later, but basically... Red and blue slads are very static. They don't change. They're just like the rank and file, and they're still... I think they're actually a slightly higher challenge rating than the three of you are supposed to be able to handle on your own. Oops. Okay. Um, green slads and beyond are able to become more powerful by changing into other colors of slads that become... Uh, weirder and crazier and creepier. So Oh, they do change. Yes, so that can be an issue. Uh, also, the fact that a green slad can transform, and generally the easiest thing for them to change into is whatever was their host. So a almost perfect copy of Feline. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. just so you all are aware of that. Well, if we ever need a body double situation. <laughs> I don't... Oh, shit, I just realized that I'm scrolling through Twitter. <laughs> are the oh, green God. ones smarter then than the rest? Yes, or they they're are. just crazier? And... Okay. Um, they are smarter. Uh, not a ton smarter, but a little bit. I think it's the difference between a 10 and 11. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me go okay. check. They, they are a little bit smarter. Um... They're basically, like, in, for, like, a traditional army, they would probably be, like, a sergeant. Um, and they spend their lives trying to become, uh, gray and then death slads. 
Yeah, so red slads have six intelligence. Blue slads have seven. Green slads have 11. Oh, wow, so that is huh. a marked improvement. Yeah. Well, okay, so, Feline, you're also aware of this now. You all probably couldn't have handled the uh, green slad on your own. It's a challenge rating eight. Um, for you all taking on, at your at fifth level, you're supposed to basically try and take on one challenge rating six in a six to one fight. Wow. Yeah. Good job, Miriam. Yeah, considering, you did it good. considering well, the fact that it was, hey, here's 29 points of damage. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the issue is that it's resistant. Uh, slads, as a rule, are all resistant to acid, cold, fire, lightning, and thunder damage. Alright. Yeah. So, physical or psychic, got it. And yeah, they're the one thing that doesn't have resistance to psychic. <laughs> I think I'm going to need to get healed before we go too much further. Um, we can deal with that tomorrow, or not tomorrow, next week. Yeah. And we return to the Ladies of Lore. Yay! Yay! Heal! <laughs> Yeah, Very if smart. I had not saved, I would have been knocked unconscious. I thought you had more health than that. I have 29. Oof. I don't have a lot of health, and that feels wrong to me. But yeah, I have 29 health, so... I'm well, really glad I saved. To be <laughs> fair, of, um, I guess, any of us to take damage? I'm probably... Oh. What'd you do? Sorry. My computer was like, you wanna you wanna download this, right? And I'm like, no, no. I don't want to download this. Right? No, Windows 10? Fuck off. What? <laughs> sorry. Um I had yeah, sorry sorry about that. I was gonna say, like, of any of us to take twenty nine damage. I'm yes, probably you the better ideal. person to take twenty nine damage. Yeah. Because yeah. I was at full health when I took it. So Oh, so now that I'm 6th level, when I slay creatures with my soul knife attacks, I get two psychic points back. Mm. Hey, nice. Nice. You don't use them often, but when you do, it's usually pretty useful. Yeah. I have to look up what I get at 6th level. I honestly probably should have given you 6th level a little while ago, but I'm sorry. Mm. I mean, I get another hit dice, so that's nice. Everyone gets hit dice. Hit dice, hit points, not dead. That's I mean, good. they're hit dice and hit points are the same. Still, I'm not dead yet. That's yeah. nice. <laughs> not quite dead yet. Um, anyway, with that, we are going to end off. Thank you all very much for joining us. We will see you tomorrow for uh, nice something. Time. Yay. Whoever know, who knows? It'll be me streaming something. I don't know what. It'll be a thing. Yes, a thing. Let's go with the thing. I just realized the blue electrical lines move now. What? Yes, they do. Is that new? Uh, not that new. It started when I got when I built the new computer. I never noticed it. Which <laughs> I guess was months ago now, actually. Dear God. Okay, we're we're heading off now. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow. Good night. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please consider checking out some of the other videos that are playing alongside this one. And uh, maybe think about checking us out on Twitter, Facebook, or Twitch. We're still running a 365-day streaming challenge. And maybe consider supporting us over on Twitch or on Patreon if you really like we did. And if you want to get access to some of our other stuff like the Derpy Puppy Feed or our Patreon-only stuff. Either way, thanks y'all.